Hi everybody, Nem here. And tonight I have got a special treat. Straight off the slow boat from China, I have the Bold Clash BO3 B Whoop. Now this is supposed to be a um, slightly upgraded version of the uh, Chiny Whoop or Iashin E010 with bigger motors and bigger battery and longer flight time and pretty much ready to just bolt a camera onto it and fly. So, let's see what it's got. <laughs> Nothing in the bag. Ooh, shiny new. I got the orange version. And this comes in a box that's very, very similar, almost identical to the box that the E010 comes in. A little plastic jewel case that looks almost identical as well. <sighs> and there's the little beastie itself. Oh, look at that. Battery's already installed and everything. Just sitting right there. Very nice. I got the orange one because I have terrible eyes and I want to be able to find it when I lose it. So let's see here. One of the first things that I noticed was that the advertised weight was only 30 grams. And this thing is supposed to have, this thing has 716 motors as opposed to the usual 615 on the Tiny Whoop. And it has a 260 milliamp battery. Let's see if there's actually a C rating on this. Um, no, I do not see any C rating whatsoever. All I see is the uh, actual dimensional markings that identify the battery. Uh, let's see. Let's see what it actually weighs. Down a little so you guys can actually read the numbers. Twenty nine point eight one grams. They actually came in two tenths under their advertised weight. Awesome. The battery is supposed to be about eight grams. Oh, look at that, 7.98. Again, under the advertised weight. Now, this thing is supposed to have a bunch of advanced features. Uh, hence the slightly more complicated remote that comes with it. You see, you got a whole bunch of buttons here. And uh, it's supposed to have return to home and headless mode. And the thing that I'm really interested in is it's supposed to have an altitude hold, uh, which uh, the E010, of course, doesn't have. So uh, let's take a quick look under the hood. OK, first thing I, I, I don't like, of course, is the plug-in motor wires. I've always been a soldering kind of guy. Uh, however, one of the things that uh, the people in uh, my mod threads are telling me is that this thing actually has a programming header. Yes, it does right there. I'll be darned right there. And here it looks like it's got a separate uh, header for um, you to plug your camera into for power. Isn't that nice? The board layout is very similar to the uh, one in the E010. And this is probably the barometer. I see it's covered with a piece of uh, foam to uh, prevent drift and uh, give a little bit of baffling against wind from the props, which is a good thought. Two screws. Let's see. Um, let's see what it looks like. Lit up. Hmm. Okay, if you're used to the E010, you're going to find that this guy is backwards. 
blue light on the back and red light on the front. I suppose if that really bugs you, you can reverse it. Let's take a quick look at the accessories. You get a spare set of props just like the original uh, Inductrix and the E010. Oh, look at that. You even get a screwdriver. Interesting. Oh, I guess that's set to make it easy for you to take the board off for uh, swapping motors. I guess they want you to be fully prepared. You'll notice that this uses the JST SH uh, Power Whoop type connector. Uh, and the battery is uh, very nice at uh, 22 gauge uh, siliconized wire. It's a little longer than I like. Could shave a little, a few grams off by, he shave a few fractions of a gram off by shortening that wire. And let's see here, what else? One thing I do notice is that this appears to be a much softer material on the frame. The frame is not nearly as rigid as my E010. Uh, they're supposed to be identical. Yeah, they are identical wheelbase. And... Identical dimensions to the props. Uh, let's take a quick look here. Let's see what our battery came at. It came almost fully charged. Well, I don't know that I'm happy about that. Uh, <laughs> Me. Yeah, I don't know that I'm happy that it came almost fully charged. But I imagine they've probably got enough of a turnover in these things that uh, they did not have to worry about those batteries uh, being messed up by uh, being left at a full charge. Hmm, that's interesting. function is interesting. The light glows dim when it shows power and when you plug in the battery it comes up high. I don't know what the indication is for fully charged. Let's leave it on there and see. Uh, where are we? Um, 260 milliamp battery at 8 grams. Advertised size on that battery is... Uh, let's grab the calipers. It advertised size is 18 by 35 by 3.8, and that's a pretty thin battery. That's almost exactly the same size as the 200 milliamp batteries that I use, that I've been using in my E010, and those are off of my old Nine Eagles uh, helicopter, and those actually are about 3.8 millimeters thick. Let's see here. Yeah, those are, oh no, they're not. Those are about six and a half millimeters thick. And this is, yeah, almost eight, 7.93 millimeters thick. So yeah, it's nowhere near the 3.8, maybe 8.3 and they did a typo. 16.5 uh, wide by Mm, 33 and a half long. So yeah, their their sizing on that is totally out to lunch, uh, the as as is advertised. Internal dimensions of the battery space are seventeen and a half wide by. About eight high, eight eight point three millimeters high by mm, thirty point two millimeters deep. Oh, excuse me, about thirty. Yeah, thirty point five millimeters deep and thirty two millimeters before you actually run into interference from the battery. Uh, 
let's see here what else uh the 716 motors are rated at 53,500 rpm uh that's i think if i recall correctly that's roughly equivalent to the red motors in speed rating and of course with a slightly larger motor we should definitely have some uh weight carrying capacity let's see what our all-up weight is with the uh with the beastie skinned all up weight without any bonnet on it is 28.32 so you should still be able to come in under eh, you should be able to come in around uh, 32 31 to 33 grams depending on the camera you put on there and how you mount it which I think is pretty darn good and let's see here you notice the frame appears to have the wire routing for you to actually uh, route wires up through and solder them these little clippies here and the screw pattern is the same as the inductrix and uh, the other tiny whoops so your other tiny whip accessories should work right on it obviously you're not going to use the same brackets because you're going to need some offset for all of this stuff uh, you'll either need to use long screws and the spacers to get a camera up above all of this stuff on the top of the board uh, or you'll have to uh, you know trim out and make a little bit of extra space well all right enough messing around with it I want to see what this thing sounds like and one thing I did notice is that this battery that's included here really is way loose so in order to give it a little bit of wedging in there I'm gonna put the battery in backwards because I do not like that being loose Are you quite done now? Okay. <laughs> wow, that is a lot more aggressive. And man, it does take some getting used to, but wow, that altitude hold works. Let's see here if I can bring it down under the camera. That would be awesome. Yeah, this thing has... Okay. Screaming at. I don't know why the transmitter is screaming at me. The 
I'm just amazed, actually, how stable this is, even in its own ground effect. I mean, really. The fact that I'm actually able to fly around on top of my bench, because I'm a terrible pilot. stupid thing later with the stock firmware if I don't just silverize it immediately um, <laughs> I can see this thing is gonna be a lot of fun y'all need to go out and get one I will post a link underneath uh, the video this is just awesome and right now they're only 18 bucks and I'm sure that uh, they'll be having a flash sale again soon making it even less so Cheers, everybody. Nem out.